Hey guys, it's Saturday, so what better day than today for a practical example of the Bellman Ford algorithm, as promised. So if you haven't already watched the previous video on the theory behind the algorithm and why it works and how it works, I suggest you go review that. It's 10 minutes of your time. It'll make going through this video much more intuitive and a lot easier because a lot of the stuff that I went over in that video won't be going over again. So anyway, this is going to be our example. Uh, this is going to be our table of values for the graph as we iterate through it. Each one of these represents an iteration. The zeroth iteration is just going to correspond to line one of the pseudocode in the previous video. It's just going to be the setup. We're going to go through that and explain how that works and show it in practice. And then we're going to have seven iterations. And in fact, if you count our nodes at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight nodes, and so we're going to be doing v minus one, seven iterations, and that will give us the shortest paths. This vth column here corresponds to lines five through eight of the pseudocode in the previous video. Uh, it's the iteration that will check for a negative weight cycle. And if I've done this right, we shouldn't find that we have a negative weight cycle. So, yes, let's begin. We've got a relaxed procedure right here, and I'm going to show that in practice whenever I can, although we won't be doing it every single time, obviously, because we're going to be iterating all of these nodes v minus one time, so it wouldn't, it wouldn't be fun or practical to show this calculation every single time. But anyway, in the zeroth iteration, we have our source vertex S pointing out to everybody else. It has no incoming edges, so that'll make it easier. Um, its distance to itself, we're going to mark as zero, right? Because it has no, there's no, you know, it's there, so zero. And in the zeroth step, remember all U and V are set to infinity or null. In this case, I'm just going to be using the dash for null because it's an easier convention to write than infinity over and over and over and over. I have a hard time drawing infinity symbols. So, that's our zeroth step. Now for the first iteration, first thing that we're going to do is we're going to relax our first node, S, which means that it has, so we're going to check to see for its outgoing edges. It has two outgoing edges. So it goes to A, it goes to A. It goes to A at a cost of 10. Okay, so what is the current cost of A? Relax will ask, what is the current cost of A? Well, the current cost of A is infinity. That's dV, right? The distance to A, so this is U, V, where U is S and V is A. W is the weight of the edge in between them. So dV, dA is infinity. We're asking, is that greater than du, which is zero, plus the weight of the edge, which is 10? And the answer is yes, of course it is. So we're going to update A with a cost of 10 coming from S. And this slash vertex name is just the convention that I'm using to display what's going on in the previous array, the, uh, the pi array that we had in the previous video. That just tells you how we got here. And when we're done in the end, I'll show you how that allows us to backtrack and print out the actual route that we took to get the shortest path. So this is going to remain zero, obviously. Then S also points to G at a cost of eight. Well, G's current cost is infinity, is that greater than 0 plus 8? Yes. So we run this statement here, we run this statement here. Its new cost is 8 from s. And all my s's look like 5's, but just bear with me. If it's underneath here, it's not a number. And then all the rest of these nodes, we do relax them, but your method, your, your, your relaxed method will see that if the value is infinity or null, it can't do anything with it. So nothing will happen here. All of these values will remain null because we haven't seen them yet. Now, in the second iteration, we're looking at this version of the distance array. This is Each one of these columns is the latest version of our distance array. So we relax S. We see that it points to A. We see that it points to G. 
and we get something a little different going on here. We see it points to A at a cost of 10. So basically what we end up with is the inequality 10 greater than 10. No, it's not. It's equal to 10. So A doesn't change. G doesn't change. Nothing changes when we relax S. We can relax A now, though, because we have data on it. So we know that we get to A at a cost of 10. A has one outgoing edge, and it goes to E. So is infinity greater than 10 plus 2? Yes. Of course it is. So E gets updated with a cost of 12 coming from A. Right? And that's A's only outgoing edge, so we're done with that. B, nothing happens. C, nothing happens. D, nothing happens. E, nothing happens. Remember, because we're still using this version of the array. We just updated it over here, but there's nothing here yet. So, F, nothing happens. G, we have data on it. We can get to G at a cost of 8. G has one outgoing edge to F at a cost of 1. Is infinity greater than 8 plus 1? Yes. So... We're going to update f with a cost of 9 coming from g, and g won't change. So in the second iteration, we end up with that. Third iteration, s remains at a cost of 0. It's still 0 from itself. It always will be. In fact, you can, if you're doing this by hand on a test or something to save time, you may as well Right? Because if this changes, honestly, something is broken. And we relax again. So, A still has a cost of 10, so nothing is different from the last round. Nothing changed. If we relax it, it only has one outgoing edge, it only goes to E, still has a cost of 12, nothing changes. B, we can't do anything. C, we can't do anything. D, we can't do anything. E, we now have data on it, and it has one outgoing edge to B at a cost of negative 2, for a total cost of 10, which we know is less than infinity, so we can just go right on ahead and say that B can be gotten to for a cost of 10 coming from E. And that's E's only outgoing edge. So we're done with E. Now we go on to F. F has two outgoing negative edges, so you know something's going to happen. So F has a cost of 9 goes to A at a cost of negative 4, which means that you can get to A at a cost of 5 if you go from F. So, 5 is less than 10, so we're just going to go ahead and put that in there. 5 from F for A. We just have the cost of getting to A. F also points to E at a cost of negative 1, meaning that you can get to E at a cost of 8 if you go from F. E's current cost is 12, which is greater than the new cost we just found. So we're going to update that with 8 coming from F. And those are all of F's outgoing edges, so we're done with F. F's distance did not change. G's distance will not change. 9 from G, 8 from S. And yes, that is an 8. And these two remain null. Now, fourth iteration. Things are starting to move a little more quickly. We're filling out these, these null values. As we fill them out, we have more things to play with. So, fourth iteration. A is now 5. So, A has a cost of 5. We obviously, we assume we relaxed S and nothing changed. A has a cost of 5. So now, that means we can get, we can use A's only outgoing edge to get to E at a cost of 7. What's E's current cost? 8. So, 7 beats 8. 7 from A. Meaning that what we just found is that it's actually cheaper. You could take this negative 1 road to get to E from F, or you could go up here and then come back down. And it's cheaper. So that's what we're doing now. And that's A's only outgoing edge, so A is done. B now has data, so it has a cost of 10. It can go to A for a cost of 11, which does not beat A's current 5. We leave it alone. B can go to C. C has nothing there. Whatever B can offer will be better than infinity, so we know that B has a cost of 10, plus 1 is going to be 11. So you can get here at a cost of 11 from B.
and that's B's only outgoing edge that we care about, so we move on. C we can't do anything with, D we can't do anything with. E now has a cost of 8 in the previous distance array, not this one. It's a little annoying doing it this way because you can see, you know, you already know the answer because you can see what's going on in the new array, but the computer is only going to be looking at this version of, the, of events, so just bear with me as we go through this. E has a cost of 8, or so we think, meaning that its only outgoing edge now allows you to get to B at a cost of 6. What is B's current cost? 10. 6 is less than 10, so we can get here for 6, which is good. A little bit faster now. And that's E's only outgoing edge, so we're done with E. F, we've already taken care of it. We know these two are not going to change now because they we can eyeball it and see that it's been minimized. Your computer, obviously, the program is going to relax it every time, but we can be more efficient. We know it's not going to change. A, S. This remains null. This is still 5 coming from F. The fifth iteration, S remains 0, nothing changes, A is 5, you can only go to E at a cost of 7, which doesn't beat the current 7, so A is done. B now has a cost of 6, and you can get to C at a cost of 7, which is a lot better than 11. So we're going to update that, 7 from B, not C, let's just, there we go, 7 from B. And that's the only one that we're interested in, because 7 is obviously not going to beat the 5, so we leave that. B is done. C, cost of 11, can get to D at a cost of 14 now. 11 plus 3, 14. 14 from C should be the new value here. And that is all we can do with C. C only has one outgoing edge. So... D is still null, we don't do anything with it. E has one outgoing edge of negative 2, its current cost is 7, 7, 6, 5 to get to B, which is even better, so we do that from E. And we knew, we knew that was coming from the last iteration that we talked about. And that's E done, so this is all going to stay the same. Alright, second to last iteration. A has a cost of 5, can only go one way, to E at a cost of 7, which doesn't beat E's current 7. B has a cost of 5, can go to C at a cost of 6, which is better than 7. Yeah. And finally, C now has a cost of 7, so it means that so that means that C can get to D at a cost of 7, 8, 9, 10. 10 from C now for D. E still has a cost of 7, 6, 5 to get to B, which doesn't beat B's current 5, so E is left alone. F still only has two outgoing edges, doesn't change anything. G only has one outgoing, it doesn't change anything. So 7, A, 9, G, 8, S, 5, F, 5, from E. So 5, 5, 6, 10, 7, 9, 8 so far. Seventh iteration. We relax S and nothing changes. We relax A. And nothing changes again. We relax B. B has a cost of 5, gets to C at a cost of 6, gets to A at a cost of 6. Nothing changes because those two values are either equal to or greater than the values we currently have. And that's B. C has a cost of 6 now, which means we can get to D at a cost of 9. D is ever-changing. 9 from C. From 14 to 10 to 9. D is very dynamic. Um, that's all we can do with C. D has a cost of 10, only has one outgoing edge, and it's not going to be, yeah, no, 9 is not better than 7, so we leave that. E has one outgoing edge, its 
cost is 7, 5 to B, nothing changes. So, in the final round, our seventh iteration, we have shortest paths to all the nodes, 5, 5, 6, 9, 7, 9, 8. Hopefully, you tried to do this on your own beforehand, and this is what you got. Now, in the vth iteration, just as humans, we can readily see that nothing is going to change here. With the only node that's really changed, because the only node that, yeah, truly, the only node that actually changed in the last iteration was D. And if you think about it, D's not going to change anymore, because the only way to get to D is to go through C. And C hasn't changed in two iterations. So it's not going to change in the next iteration, because if, if C hasn't changed, then that means that B hasn't changed, and B hasn't changed in three iterations. And if B has changed in three, then that means that its previous hasn't changed. What's B's previous? E. Its previous hasn't changed in four. And there it is, one, two, three, four. So, you know that we're done. This entire column here would just come out to be equal. So we know that we found the shortest paths in a graph which does not contain a negative weight cycle. It's not acyclic, but it doesn't have a negative weight cycle in it, so all of these paths are valid. And working backward, so say that we pick D. Say that we want to know specifically how to get from S to D. Well, we start at D. Where's D? Here it is. What's D? Well, so, and we have the previous beneath the cost. So the cost to get to D is 9, and its previous is C. Let's start over here. Say that we, we arrive at D, and we get there from C. Now, what's C's previous? C's previous is B. B's previous is E. E's previous is A. A's previous is F. F's previous is G. Oh boy. G's previous is S. So the shortest route to get to D would be to S, to G, to F, to A, to E, to B, to C, to D. For a total cost of 9. 9, G, F, A, do, 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 do. Yep. So that's how the previous array works. That's how the iterations work. That's how the V iteration works. That's how Relax works. And that is how Bellman Ford works on a directed graph with weighted edges, including negative edge weights. Hopefully that helped. If not, let me know. Um, if you'd like to see a graph that has a negative weight cycle in it, uh, let me know, and I'm happy to throw up an example of one that does, and we can find the problem over here. Um, but it would play out pretty much the same way. Just on this iteration, we would find that the weights decrease a little bit more. Some weight would decrease even more. But here we know it's not going to happen because of the unchanging values here, 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 and then as you go on, A didn't change in 5. You can count these up. So 2, no, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and then it just keeps going. The ones that don't change, they give it away. So yeah, there it is. Have an awesome Saturday. And uh, I'll see you next time.